We're going to take a look at the Power Management Evaluation Board that is called AS3701 Eval Kit. Here is what comes in the AS3701 Eval Kit. A flash drive memory stick with the driver software on it, the evaluation circuit board itself, and a USB cable that can be connected to a Windows 7 PC. Besides the data sheet, there is also an evaluation kit manual. The evaluation kit manual explains what is in the kit, how to get started, the hardware, and the various tabs in the GUI software evaluation tool. For help getting the evaluation kit manual or the GUI software, customers can contact their AMS representative or click on the support tab on the AMS.com website. I will walk through the basic steps needed to get the eval board up and running. First, double check that all the jumpers on the eval board circuit board are in the default locations. The eval kit manual has a picture of the circuit board. It uses lettered boxes to identify the various jumpers on the circuit board. The eval kit manual explains the function of each of the jumpers. Second, install the software driver for the graphical user interface or GUI. Third, establish a connection between the PC and the evaluation board by using the enclosed USB cable. The USB cable attaches to connector U2 on the circuit board. Fourth, supply the board with power. There are several methods for attaching a supply voltage. The simplest way is to attach a second USB cable to connector U5. Note that this second USB connection is not used for communication. Rather, this USB is just a means to provide power. Now we can start the GUI program. The GUI may prompt you to update your firmware at this point. The firmware file would be found either on the USB stick or you can request the latest from the AMS.com support page. Double check that the communication path is working properly by looking at the two boxes in the lower right part of the GUI screen. If all is working properly, then both boxes should be green, otherwise they are red. After installed, I can click on Help and About and see that I am running product version 1.2.0.0. Your version may be different. Be sure to use the latest version of software available from AMS. The AS3701 GUI has six tabs. There is a lot of functionality in this eval kit, so I will just hit some key highlights of each tab. Application. This shows the block diagram of the device. Let's talk about some of the functions. We have two low dropout regulators, one DC to DC step down or buck converter, and two current sinks. There is a voltage supervisor, that allows the system to shut down or reset if the supply voltage drops too much. We also have the OTP one-time programmable boot ROM where your specific boot up sequence can be stored. The interface is the I2C. There are also five general purpose IOs on the AS3701B and there are two GPIOs on the AS3701A. Here is the block for the integrated linear battery charger, which is used to manage the charging of a single lithium ion cell. Regulator tab. On this tab, we are able to control the outputs of the DC to DC step down converter, which is called SD1, and also we can control the two low dropout regulators called LDO1 and LDO2. First, we can select if we want these regulator functions enabled or not by checking the appropriate box. I can slide the SD1 DC to DC voltage slider control up and down. The yellow trace on the oscilloscope changes accordingly. For the DC to DC voltage converter, you can decide on the conversion frequency in the 1 MHz to 4 MHz range. Here's a selection for DVM, which stands for Dynamic Voltage Management. The DVM feature controls over and undershoot from occurring when a voltage level is changed. The time duration of the slope of the voltage rise time can be saved into registers with 8 microseconds and 16 microseconds being the two choices available. So what controls do we have for the two LDOs? 
Again, we have a slider to select the output voltage we want for each of the LDOs. The LDOs are shown as the blue and magenta traces on the oscilloscope. There are a few other regulator controls on this tab. For instance, we can select a limit for the current supplied by the LDOs. And also, there's a GPIO control for each regulator that allows you to use an external input to enable or disable each regulator. GPIO tab. The AS3701B has five GPIOs. These are extremely configurable and can be used as different types of inputs or outputs. GPIO1 and GPIO2 have the added capability that they can be used as the paths for the two current sinks in the IC. In the AS3701B version of the chip, GPIO3 and GPIO4 have the added ability that they can be tied to an NTC resistor. NTC stands for negative thermal coefficient, and using such an NTC resistor allows the temperature at the battery to be monitored by the AS3701. It is very important to supervise the battery temperature during the charging process so it does not overheat. The GPIOs are very configurable in that they can be set up as any of a variety of input types, including an input that's tri-stated, an input with a pull-up, an input with a pull-down, etc. The GPIOs can also be used as a push-pull configured output or as an open drain NMOS I.O. pin. You can see that these GPIOs are very flexible. Further, on this drop-down menu, it allows you to control the behavior of the I.O. pin. GPIOs can be assigned, for example, to generate an interrupt, report various events, or simply act as an I.O. signal. Housekeeping tab. This block on the upper left allows us to set the reset voltage levels. If the supply voltage, called VSUP, falls below our certain set point, then an IC reset will occur. In the center of the housekeeping page, we can control how the on key works. We can define the on pin of the device so that if there is a long press of, say, 4 seconds or 8 seconds, we can execute a reset or even power off. Here, the AS3701 has a temperature supervisor so that the IC can tell if its core is getting too hot. This temperature supervisor is in addition to the NTC battery temperature measurement that I mentioned earlier. Here, we can control the standby mode functionality. Among other things, you can configure which voltage supplies you want to remain on even during standby. Under the housekeeping tab, it is also possible to set up interrupts for various events. For example, you can generate an interrupt if a low battery is ever sensed or if over temperature occurs among other events. OTP tab. Here we can sequence the different voltage rails to come up in the order that we choose. Let's set time slot 1 for the DC to DC step down converter. We will set this to 1.1 volts. For time slot 2 we can program LDO1 for 2.2 volts. For time slot 3 let's set up LDO2 for 3.3 volts. If I wanted, I could even use time slot 4 to sequence a GPIO to indicate some other event or status. There are a few other controls on the OTP tab. One is the delay interval. This delay is the elapsed time between when each voltage rail will come up. The delay choices for the rails to power up are either 1 millisecond or 4 millisecond. Let's set the delay time for 4 milliseconds. It is easy to save your programming file. Just click on Save OTP Startup File and give your sequence a name. For mass production with minimum orders of at least 50,000 pieces, AMS has the ability to take your OTP startup file and program it into AS3701 devices. The final OTP programming is done on the AMS factory floor. Then, when you receive your AS3701 parts, they are already hard-coded with the custom configuration that you created for your design. 
Now, let's click on Load OTP Startup File. This opens up the startup parameter file that you created. We now want to click on Write OTP to write the startup file parameters into the AS3701's register bank. I should point out that while we are clicking on Write OTP, we are not actually irreversibly burning to a real one-time programmable memory bank, but rather we are simulating the OTP write function. In other words, you can click on Write OTP as many times as you want, and you can keep on experimenting until you get your sequence just the way you like it. Now, let's click on Test Startup. This is the fun part. This will run the startup file and bring up the voltage rails to the levels that we selected and in the order that we chose. We can see on the scope that the voltage outputs we programmed into our startup file have been executed and are in the sequence that we wanted. The DC to DC converter gives us 1.1 volts and then after a 4 millisecond delay we see that LDO1 ramps up to 2.2 volts. After another 4 millisecond delay, the scope shows that LDO2 is outputting 3.3 volts, and all of this is just as we had expected. Charger tab. This tab allows for controlling the charging of a single lithium ion battery cell. To use the battery charger, we would connect a lithium ion battery to VBAT and ground, as shown here. The battery can now be used to power the eval circuit board, so you no longer need a second USB connection for power. There are three screens related to the charger, and we will just briefly mention them here because battery charging requires a lot of additional explanation. The first screen is general, and it describes some of the parameters associated with battery charging. The second screen is the charger diagram and it shows the different phases of battery charging. The third screen allows for supervision of the NTC resistor. Remember that an NTC temperature sensor allows the AS3701B to monitor the battery temperature during the charging process. Those are some of the highlights of the AMS AS3701 MicroPMIC. It has a lot of functionality in a very small package. It is perfect for portable and wearable projects where small size and low power are required. To learn more, please visit us at AMS.com. Thanks.